So this video is based on possible macroeconomic conflicts with regards to uh, actual economic growth and net exports. So what we're going to be delving into is why a country, especially at the UK, if they see rising actual growth, why that might cause a worsening of a trade deficit. I'm going to pick out two time points in this graph where we see actual growth rising. So here and here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a separate graph with the value of imports. And I'm going to see in this exact same time period what happens to those imports. So at this point and at this point, we see again that rise in the value of imports. So we see a positive relationship between actual growth and the value of imports from both EU imports and non-EU imports. So why is that? Well, to begin with, the UK is a consumer driven economy. So the UK consumption contributes an average 63.7% towards nominal GDP. And if we consider all the components of aggregate demand, consumption is the biggest contributor towards GDP. And therefore, if we do see a rise in aggregate demand, and let's say it's from consumption, then what we're going to need is the resources and the, the output to obviously match that rise in demand in, from the UK population. So if we think about it from the point of view of inputs, we may manufacture uh, the goods in the UK, but that doesn't mean that the resources are, are also domestic. And if you think about the complexities of producing a product and all the different types of materials that are involved, the chances are we'll still be importing the resources or the commodities to help produce those goods. But it's also worth remembering that the UK is, is now mostly a service-based economy. So we are heavily reliant on semi and finished goods also being imported into this country. So if we see a rise in demand in, for example, the retail sector um, and we need those goods, then we might have to import those goods from abroad. So that's going to see an increase in volume and value of imports. But you also have to remember, if we do see a rise in actual growth, then confidence in the economy is obviously growing. And that might act as an accelerator effect to firms. So what UK firms might also do is they might start to import capital. And that could be, for example, machinery from different parts of the world. And all of these contribute towards a rise in the value of imports because of that actual growth increasing. Now, if we break it down with regards to UK imports, these are the biggest components of the volume and the value of UK imports. And again, we can even see some of our UK top trading partners with regards to imports. Now, we can see capital on there, but we can see um, we can see finished goods, but we can also see in terms of, for example, material manufacturers. So if we break that down and have a look at it, we can see commodities such as iron and steel. So when we're considering the rise in actual growth and the need to obviously increase output to match that, that, uh, that demand, then we're going to need the commodities and the resources and the inputs. We're going to need the semi and the finished goods. And we also are going to need the capital. And all of those might come from different countries in the world. So what we see, and remember this video is about those macroeconomic conflicts and those macroeconomic trade-offs. So there is, as I've mentioned before, a positive relationship between actual growth and the value of imports. But because of that, that means there's an inverse relationship between actual growth and net exports. Because with the greater value of imports, the more the net exports and the trade account is going to deteriorate. Now, if we had a situation where, for example, maybe the UK government wanted to prioritise the, the trade account, maybe they were worried about the trade account, then one of the policies the government could use is an expenditure reducing policy. And what they would do there is they would try to reduce and limit their growth to try to improve that net exports and improve the trade account. So that's one way where a trade off might take place. Now, I think it's also worth remembering that the US has a, a similar economy to the UK with regards to it being consumer driven. And this again shows you that when we see an increase in GDP growth, we see a worsening of the trade balance account with the trade balance deficit increasing. And again, when GDP starts to fall, we see the trade balance start to improve. And that again shows that inverse relationship between the two and why they conflict in the short run. 